Spectre Console allows you to turn your C-Sharp console apps into visually appealing, informative applications. In this series of videos, we are learning how to take full advantage of this library in 10-minute chunks. The source code is available as a link in the description. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use live displays to modify existing data on the screen for real-time updates. If you like this series, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and visit imtimcorey.com for more training resources. Let's get started. Now I have made a couple of updates. So I started off by creating a table with uh, title, lessons, and hours. We're going to display some um, data from an API. I also created this list of course info. Where's course info? Well, it's right here. It's just a record with course name, course lesson count, and course length in hours. Now that corresponds to the uh, the sampleapi.com's uh, API structure so we can make some calls. Now what we're going to do is create use this table to live update data in it. We have no data in it right now. We just have three columns and we do have the show footers turned on. So I'm going to await ANSI console dot live and we're going to pass in the table. And then we're going to say start async. Now, as you notice, there's also a start method. You can do that as well if you don't need to await something. So and it's just like you've seen before. So async context. And then we'll put our data inside of here and put our semicolon at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop. So let's do a for loop here. And I don't know why it does that sometimes with the global system in 32. Let's do an int. And we're going to start at one. And I know that we have um, 31 courses currently in the API. We actually have more courses than that. But we have 31 in the API. So we'll go from one to less than 32, which would be 31. So I also made a change in the helpers class. I added this little helper here, which what it does is it calls the fetch API data async, but then it takes the string and converts it to type of T, which in this case is going to be the course info record. So it's going to return back the, the, um, the record. So with that in mind, we can say course info, and we say course equals await helpers dot get typed data async. And we're going to say it's a type course info. And then we will put a new line here, um, our dollar sign for string interpolation, HTTPS, the sample API dot com slash courses slash I like so. And that will get us back our model, which we then we want to add to our um, our list of model. So we got this list of model up here that we're going to or list of yeah course info. We're going to add that to the list. We have all of our courses. Now what I'm doing here is not the most efficient way. I could have just said courses and not slash I, so that we can get the list of entire courses with one call. But we're doing multiple calls against this because of the fact that I want to show things coming in over time. So I see that it's calling multiple uh, APIs and getting data over time. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say table dot add row. And in this row, we're going to say course dot course name. And then course dot course lesson count. And then we'll also do a course dot course length in hours. And we'll do two string on these to be good citizens because these are not strings by default. Um, this one's an integer and this one is a double. So we've now added a row with the three strings for the three pieces of data we want to display in that row. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say table dot columns and we'll say column zero dot footer. 
And we haven't done this yet, but this is the only thing you can do with tables is have a footer on, on it. We can say footer, and we're going to say uh, count, and then we'll say courses.count. So it's going to give us the number of courses we've downloaded so far. And then we're going to add, well, let's duplicate this, do it two more times, and we'll say one and two. But for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to say courses.sum, and we'll just say x, and x.course lesson count, and we'll say two string. We have to unpin this here to give us enough space to see that. So what we're doing here is we're doing a, um, a sum of all the lesson counts, since it's the lesson count column. And then we'll do the same thing down here, but instead of lesson count, we're gonna say course length in hours. We'll, we will sum that as well. So you can see how many courses we have, the, the first one, they can see how many lessons in total for all the courses we have, and then how long in hours uh, for all of the courses we're loading so far. So all of that is in this live um, object. And the, the critical thing here is you want to say context dot refresh whenever you make a change. And this will make sure that it updates the display every time a change happens. So let's save this and run it. And we get an index out of range. Excellent. So I must have um, messed something up there for my index. Let's go back and take a peek. Ah, that's, I forgot how to count by zero or from zero. It's zero, one, and two, not zero, two, and three. Um, that should solve our problem. Let's do it again. Let's run our application. And now notice it's it's coming in, but it's also updating the count and our totals at the bottom. So we have 1,600 lessons. We have 403.5 hours, and we have 31 total courses. And there's our list as it got populated. Now, let's make this a little easier to see by commenting out this table row, just so we can see um, just the, the updates to the footer. So let's save that and we can watch as this footer updates in real time. So it even makes the, the, um, the column for title wider once we get to 10 on our count for number of titles. So that shows you how to do a live update to pretty much anything on the screen. You don't have to be a table. It can be, um, it can be a panel. It can be text, whatever you need to do to be able to update your screen. You can even change things like let's change the colors. Let's, let's highlight different things. Let's, um, you know, put spinners on or whatever else. So lots of cool things you can do with the, um, ability to create these, um, these live displays using the live keyword. Okay. So the live keyword, again, I use the async version because I was doing awaits right here. But if you don't need to await something, then you say start. You don't need to say async. You don't need to await it. That's the big difference. Um, but this allows you to create those live displays. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.